What is up guys, it's your boy Swallam here and back with another Classic War video for Season of Discovery. Now, today we're going to talk, talk, be talking about two different gold farms that you can do in Phase 3 of Season of Discovery to make ridiculous amounts of gold. Now, these gold farms will not have any class requirements with them, no gear requirements either. They're really easy farms and they're really good for pretty much all classes out there. Now, they're both located in pretty much the same place, so if farm 1 is taken, you can go and test out farm 2. I'm playing on Living Flame on a PvP server, which means that these farms are ridiculously overpopulated on my server usually, but even I was able to do this farm without... Um, well, I did have competition, but even then, competition doesn't really matter too much, because the mobs are spawning really fast. But being on a PvP server, if there's PvP action, that is when the competition starts becoming annoying. Now, before we check out these farms, I do want to say that anyone who has my Classic WoW gold making guide will have early access to future gold making farms in phase 3 as well. If you want to have early access to gold farms, investments, gold making videos, all of that stuff, get that gold making guide to join the discord community you get access to and check out those videos in early access that way you can make more gold before those videos do become public. You get early access to pretty much all of my gold making videos that way and the guide itself also is 157 pages by itself containing the best gold farms, the best crafts to do for profit, the best investments and just regular gold making strategies and tips and tricks. So, check that out, the link will be down below in the video description or the pinned comment. Alternatively, check out my Patreon, also linked down below in the video description or the pinned comment, where I'm giving you guys one video exclusively on Patreon every single month. That means there's one video that will never be public on YouTube, and the only way to have that one is to be on my Patreon. I also share my TSM strings on Patreon as well, and I'm making detailed gold making posts. It's another way to directly support me as a content creator, and and I will do my very best to help you get that value back and give you even more value on top as well by sharing everything I have to share when it comes to gold making. So check out my gold making guide and my Patreon, once again the links are down below. Now let's check out these farms and before I go and show you guys my, uh, my actual footage of the farms, let's talk about the locations and where they are. So they're both in Felwood, Felwood is a really good location in phase 3 for gold farms and we've already talked about the um, the elementals northeast of the iron tree woods right living essence is being farmed there we've already talked about that in a previous video going to the left here you will have a bunch of satyr mobs that you can farm so satyr mobs right here on this ledge you have a lot of high level satyrs and they can give you fell cloth right now that is really expensive you can also if you're a caster get demonic runes here which are actually useful for raiding for example you can get healing potions mana potions we'll take a further look at the actual loot table towards the end of this video now going down south east from there you have this 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 burning charred veil type of thing where you will have fire elementals and that's farm number two so fire elementals right here and then set here all the way up here now with those two locations out of the way let's take a look at the farm let's take a look at the loot table and why you want to farm here So here we go, this is me farming in that same location, we're taking a look at the fire elementals first. So this one is the one that was south in the charred veil or the shattered scar veil, and you want to focus on entropic beasts and entropic horrors. These are between level 51 and 55, so you do want to make sure you can kill mobs that are slightly higher level than you, and they do hit kind of hard, so be aware of that as well. Now when you're farming here there are a couple of high level elites patrolling around, so really be on the lookout for those and stay away from from them. When it comes to the loot table here, you're looking for a couple of very specific items. You're looking for Heart of Fire, Elemental Fire, and number one, Essence of Fire. This is the expensive one, currently going for 40 gold on my server, and has a 1.3% drop chance from these mobs. That being said, Elemental Fire has a 6%, and Heart of Fire has a 7% drop chance. Now, scrolling further down, you also have Waylaid Supplies dropping here, Mithril Lockboxes, 
mage scrolls, you have blues, you have different types of greens, and going all the way down, you can see they can actually drop the traveler's backpacks. A 16 slot bag currently selling for a lot of gold on my server. The last one I saw was 150 gold. Now, if that's still the price, I don't know, but they can drop from here, and it's just another item you can get while farming. Now, that's gonna be a jackpot item, the traveler's backpack. You will get way more essence of fire so you'll be looking for essence of fire while also getting hearts of fire elemental fire and sometimes an essence of fire and if you've spent several hours here you might even find the traveler's backpack that being said many of the greens are really high level 47 48 49 and even level 50 so if you get the right green proccing with the right stats like off power off shadow power or off fire power those could be really valuable so look for greens with the right stats while you're farming here as well. Now next up we have the satyrs or the satyrs, whatever you, however you pronounce those. You have those in the Jade Fire Run, and you'll be farming these for the Fell Cloth. In this case, you have a couple different satyrs at this place, they're all called the jade fire. So you can take a look at the jade fire rogue, the tricksters and all of the high level mobs. Now I'm gonna take a look at the tricksters here, you also have the betrayers and you even have the hell callers. So we're taking a look at the um, tricksters and the betrayers. Now what I'm doing here is I'm playing two mages in this one pool, I also farmed here on my hunter for example, but they are AoE farmable. Now if you're a one player mage it could be very difficult, could be very tricky, they sometimes even mind control you. So be careful of that and they sometimes break their, their freeze even earlier so be really careful if you're AOE farming these I would probably say just be a hunter because that way you don't have to spend downtime drinking between pulls and you can just pull mobs one by one back to back to back and it's usually super easy as well now me having access to playing two mages at the same time does give me the option to AOE farm even though I, I died a couple of times while doing so so it might not be what I recommend. I still think being a hunter and just literally um, single targeting and just pulling back to back, chain pulling will be either just as efficient or even more efficient depending on your gear, right? But being a mage and AOE farming does help a little bit. So we already talked about the location here, I've shown you an example pull. Let's talk about the loot and what you're looking for. So scrolling down here we have the loot table of these mobs, we have the rune cloth, we have the demonic rune, we have the fell cloth, major healing potions, superior mana potions, Agility rank 3, Strength rank 3, Spirit rank 4, Protection rank 4, Mithril lockbox, Bunch of Whaley Supplies, a bunch of greens, Shadow Blade, this one is incredibly valuable by the way, the Shadow Blade, so you really want to be on the lookout for that one, Mage Scroll once again, Journeyman's Backpack, and a bunch of greens. Once again, the greens can proc with incredible stats and would then be really valuable as well. Think about the Shadow Power, Fire Power ones, they're really helpful, and you can get Traveler's Backpack from here as well. Now, once again, you can get Shadow Blade. That is a really expensive item in Phase 3. Rogues want this one because of their weapon speed and also their DPS. It's a level 48 DPS with a chance on hit to send a shadowy bolt at the enemy. So that combined with the dagger speed makes this an absolutely ridiculously good weapon to be using for rogues in the current phase. So there we go, those are two farms I would highly recommend you check out in phase 3. We have the elemental fires once again, we have these jade fires, and go and check them out if you haven't already, and if you do, let me know how much gold per hour you are able to make on average. Once again, just to show you the locations right here, you go to Fellwood, so farm number 1 was the elemental fires in this place, right here, farm number 2 was the jade fires, up at the jade fire run, right here, and you also have the farm from yesterday, or a couple of days ago, all the way to the east for living essence, that means you have 3 farms, all in one place, so you can go and check out if any of them are available for you on your server, and once again if you're playing on a pvp server and you see a lot of the enemy faction, try to layer swap, because for me that, that really works, a couple of layers are really horde infested, a couple of layers are really alliance infested, it feels like when you're playing on a pvp server, People don't want a PvP, they just want to say they're on a PvP server. Meanwhile, layer 1 is like the horde layer, layer 2 is like the alliance layer. Everyone is just trying to clump up as one faction on one layer, so it feels like 
you're segregating the content. Even though you're on a PvP server, you're doing your best to avoid the PvP as much as you can. But either way, yeah, once again, let me know if you let me know the gold per hour you get in the comments down below, and let me know the servers you play on as well in the comments down below. Check out my gold making guide and my Patreon as well, linked down below. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you again in the next video very soon.